beacon set on a hill. We aim to be a beacon of God's good news in Answorth and wherever he places us to live and work. We are here to demonstrate to others the good news of Jesus Christ. To restore life, rebuild community, and build up the body of the church in love so that all are actively involved in the task. Go, be fruitful, and multiply. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Beacon. Good morning, church. And for those people that are online, uh, welcome. It's Mothering Sunday today. Uh, a blessed time. Uh, we're going to probably celebrate it slightly different. We've got the men actually leading the service today. And I'm trying to look around to see where the men are. <laughs> but the men are leading the service today. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, one question. Why me is the question that we're going to be asking today. And it's a question to you. And it's also a question to me. Why me? And during the service, we'll have a couple of people who will be doing the word. Uh, and some people that you probably wouldn't see up, up the front. Or maybe I've seen them for the first time up the front. So we we'll look forward to that today. We're going to be looking at the virtues, some of the virtues of women in the Bible. And I'm just going to steal a little time for myself because the one that I wanted to do was Deborah. Deborah, warrior woman woman who wanted to do what was right, but if the man wasn't going to do it, she was going to do it. And today, we're going to be talking about that kind of virtue in women. And we're going to try and see if God has got a, an explanation for us today. First of all, are there any warriors out there? All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something really, 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 really not unusual. Okay, are there any warrior men out there? <laughs> any warrior men? Okay, what I want to do, I'm going to play one game. You're, you're into games? You like games? I can play games. Okay, I, I need one warrior woman, and you're going to need a Bible. You're going to need a Bible, and not the one that's on your mobile phone. You're going to need one that you can actually flick through and get through. And I'm going to choose somebody, somebody, somebody like, I'm going to choose Jesse. Jesse, can you find yourself a Bible, sir? Find yourself a Bible. All right. Let me see which, I just want one lady because it's going to be a challenge. Oh, is it Serena? Oh, <laughs> hey. <laughs> so we have a warrior man and we have a warrior woman. <laughs> okay. So you know the um, thing about um, drawing your sword when I um, tell you what um, Bible reading we're going to do. So I'm going to make this really, really... <laughs> I'm going to make this really easy for you. So, the first person to get, oh, well, you have to say it after me. After I've told you, then say it. I want you to get to Psalm 28. Ver oh, no, 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 no. Wait, don't start. Oh, okay. Hold your Bible up in the air. Hold your Bible up in the air. I want you to get to Psalm 28, verse 1. Repeat it. Psalm 28, verse 1. Go. Let's see if it's going to be a man, it's going to be a woman. Who's going to win? Oh Read it. Go. You got there before me. Go. No, no, no. <laughs> I got it. I've got it. Okay. Okay, Psalm 28, verse 1. To you, Lord, I call. You are my rock. Do not turn a deaf ear to me. But if you remain silent, I shall be like those who go down to the pit. Thank you. That is correct. So it looks like it's one to the ladies this morning. Shall we go for one more? One more challenge. Oh, uh, oh, pressure, pressure, pressure. 
this is not going to... <coughs> Jesse, there's no pressure on it at all. Absolutely none at all. Okay. This one is Romans chapter 3, verse 3. Repeat. Romans chapter 3, verse 3. Go! Got it. Go on. Romans chapter 3, verse 3. <laughs> Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> what if some were unfaithful? Will their unfaithfulness multiply God's faithfulness? Thank you very much, Serena. Two nil. I think we're going to continue this after because I'm sure there is a warrior man out there who can be faster. <laughs> okay, so um, as I said, Warriors come in all, all forms today, and it's going to be a blessing that we have a, a time together uh, here. I'm just going to ask, um, uh, where is he? Da -da -da -da. I thought I saw Tim. Tim, could you just open up in prayer for us, please? Just real, real simple, real nice and easy, and then we can start. Thank you. Okay, let, let's pray. Let's come before the Lord together. As here in this time. Father, we thank you so much for time to be together with you. Uh, Lord, I thank you. That's what it is. You are, um, you are the parent above all parents. And from you, uh, every family received its design because you designed us and you designed us to be um, in a family, including uh, mothers and fathers. Thank you. And this morning, we just pray for your spirit to come and speak through everyone who's taking part. Speak through your word, Lord, that we will all be touched by your word and that we will all be challenged and encouraged in whatever way you want to speak to us this morning, especially um, our mums and our women who are present and online, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Just wanted just to spend just a moment in thought um, for those mothers that have already passed away and that are not with us. Uh, I just want to just um, just give them a moment. So if you just close your eyes for one minute and just remember those that have gone, whether your aunt or whether you, uh, your mother or somebody that you know who has passed, just, just give them a, a few seconds. Amen. Thank you. Um, yeah, I was just thinking about my, my own mom, who's not with me, uh, with us today. Uh, and the memories flood back of all of the things. I say, if you're a, a mischievous um, person, like I was, and my mom, <laughs> well, um, that's what moms do. They do correct us uh, to put us on the, on the right path. What I wanted to do now is, um, are you guys ready for worship? Yes. Are you ready to sing? You, are, you have the freedom to get up. You got the freedom to dance. You got the freedom to shout, move, and do all kinds of things. Because Nathan is doing it today. And hopefully you'll have a great time of worship. So, Nathan, over to you. Morning, church. Morning, church. So as um, my dad said, we're going to have a time of worship now. So if you guys could stand, that would be brilliant. Mm. 
we're gonna sing a sing a few songs. Um, hopefully you guys should know them. And um, as you see, it's just me one up here, so you guys are gonna have to help me out big loads. Can you guys do that? Can you guys help me out? Okay, we got some of you. We got some of you. That's all we need. That's all we need. It's a song that you guys should know. We have come into this house, amen. This house gathered in his name to worship him, and we have come into his house gathered in his name to worship him. And we have come into his house gathered in his name to worship Christ the Lord. Worship him. to worship say hey yeah they're ready they're ready if you're ready to worship we have come into this house and gathered in his name to worship him so we have we have come into this house and gathered in his name to worship him Ready to worship, let's forget about ourselves, concentrate on him and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves, concentrate on him and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves and concentrate on him and worship him. Concentrate on him and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves. Concentrate on him and worship him. Let's forget. Concentrate on him and worship Christ the Lord. Worship him, Christ. Ready to worship, say hey. One more time, let me hear you. If you're ready to worship, say hey. If you're ready to worship, say hey. Amen, amen. You guys ready to worship, amen? The next song we're gonna do is a, it's a new song, but it's it's relatively easy to um to catch on. So hopefully you guys do catch on. The song is called No One and it, it just basically talks about there being nobody other nobody else other than God. The song says, um, in a part it says, Who was who else can lead us, lead us to freedom? No one, nobody else but God. Amen. So Yahweh, and Yahweh, holy is 
Continue worship uh, in a moment. So I'll pass that to Rod. Hi, how you doing? Good, 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 good. 
I've got a few things on uh, the program today. We've got a few new people going to be taking uh, a role or a part in, in the service this morning. Uh, I'm going to call on some... The, all right, let me just give a little bit of insight. Um, we've got someone who's experienced, we've got someone who's new, and we've got somebody who's young who's going to be bringing the word today. So, first of all, the very new person. Matt, would you like to come and share your thoughts on the subject that we're doing about the virtues? Give me encouragement. Good morning, everyone. I thought I was a young person. So. <laughs> Can we just wait a few seconds, please, for my family to arrive? Oh, right. They're just they're just walking through the door. They're just walking through the door. So um, I'm going to talk about Ruth. Now I I, hadn't, I don't remember actually reading about Ruth before. Um, I know more about the the New Testament and and Genesis, but not about the. Um, I don't know much about the the Old Testament. Um, but I will do from now on. <laughs> I will. I will do. Um, okay. So I just like for just like Dion to come in. She's obviously parking the car. But okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, All right. While, while we're waiting, are there any warriors out there? <laughs> I'm looking for a, a warrior woman and a warrior man. Okay, where is the warrior woman? Who wants to be a warrior woman today? We've got to just, we've got some time. Otherwise, I'm going to pick somebody. You don't want me to pick somebody. No, no. Okay. On the, um, I'm going to look for someone over. Ah, oh yes, Anne-Marie, you look like you're really a warrior, a warrior woman, a warrior woman, a warrior, you need your Bible, and I'm looking for a warrior man, now where's a warrior man, where's a warrior man, I can, <laughs> a warrior man, all right, I'm going to go for, ah, there he is. Albert, Albert, you find a Bible. We've still got some time because um, Dion's still parking up. <laughs> She's here. She's here. All right, then, real quick one, real quick. You can stand, stand where you are. Da, 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 da. Okay, so. For the, okay, can you have, if you hold the Bibles up in the air, Proverbs 31, but that Proverbs 31, <laughs> verse 10. Oh, hold on, I haven't said go yet. Re repeat after me, Proverbs 31, verse 10. Go. Come on, Albert. Come on, Albert. Come on, Albert. Come on. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> A wife of noble character who can find is worth far more than rubies. Thank you very much. And that is our text today as well. Thank you very much, Albert. Let me down. Okay then, so the story of Ruth. Ruth is a story of loyalty, courage and love. It is a time of judges. She is a Moabite woman who married Marlon, the son of Naomi. Naomi, her husband and her two sons were forced to leave Bethlehem due to a famine and seek refuge in the land of Moab. Tragedy strikes and Naomi's husband and sons all passed away leaving her alone with her two daughters-in-law, Orpah and Ruth. Naomi heard that the famine in Judah had passed and, feeling destitute, decided to return home. She heard 
urged her daughters-in-law to return to their families and find new husbands. She knew it would be difficult for two foreign widows to find husbands in Judah. Orpah left, but Ruth refused to leave her side, declaring, where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Ruth's loyalty and devotion to Naomi led them back to Bethlehem, and it was the time of the barley harvest. Naomi thought God had abandoned her, but Ruth asked if she could gather the fallen grains left behind by the harvesters from the field of Boaz to provide for herself and Naomi. Ruth was embodying the virtues of hard work and selflessness. Boaz was a family was a wealthy family member of her father-in-law. He was impressed by Ruth's humility and kindness. He extended his protection to her and told her to only gather from his fields, where he told his harvesters to purposely leave grains behind for her to gather. Naomi realises Boaz's significance in their lives and encouraged Ruth to approach and seek his, his favour. He was, Boaz was a kinsman, a kinsman redeemer, one who would marry another family member, another family member's widow, and take on their name. Boaz was moved by Ruth's courage and virtue, leading him to marry her, highlighting God's providential care and Ruth's steadfast faith. Boaz realised there was another kinsman redeemer and offered him Ruth, but he refused. Their union brings joy to Ruth and Boaz, which, was, which also restores hope to Naomi, who becomes a grandmother to their son Obed, who would become the grandfather of King David, making Ruth an integral part of the lineage of Jesus Christ. So, why did God choose Ruth? Her story reveals virtue that resonates deeply with God's heart. Ruth exemplified loyalty, resilience, humility, and trust in God's plan. Qualities that God values in his children. In Ruth, we see a woman who embraced her circumstances with grace, demonstrating unwavering faith in God's guiding hand. In conclusion, let's focus on these four key elements. Ruth's un unwavering loyalty to Naomi, their mother-in-law, even in the face of adversity, demonstrates a deep commitment to family and faith. Resilience and perseverance. Despite the challenges of being a widow in a foreign land, Ruth persists in providing for herself and Naomi, showing resilience and perseverance in difficult times. <clears throat> Humility and diligence. Ruth's humility is evident in her willingness to work hard in the fields to provide for her family. Her diligent efforts reflect her humble character. Trust in God's providence. Throughout the story, Ruth trusts in God's providential care, ultimately, providing, ultimately leading her to find favour with Boaz and securing a hopeful future for herself and Naomi. Redemption and restoration. The narrative of Ruth is a beautiful depiction of redemption and restoration. As Ruth's faithfulness leads to blessings and a place in the lineage of King David and ultimately Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. <laughs> It's nice to see somebody having a go. Yeah, yeah. It's nice to see somebody having a go. And in this story, I, sometimes you can see your own parents in the story. Uh, resilience. Uh, I'm just thinking about the time when my mom, you know, you have corned beef and that can stretch. How then get them to out to stretch? These days, you know, fast food and all that kind of stuff. But back in the day, our parents, our mothers, they stretched they, prov you know, God provided, God provided in, in a big way. 
And I just want to say thank you, Matt, for encouraging us with that first story. What I want us to do now, uh, we're going to move on. There's some like dedications. So there's a little video that's going to be played. And if you want to just listen to that for a few seconds, and then we'll go on to the next part of our journey today. What do I admire most about my mom? My mom is kind and takes care of me all the time. What I admire about my mom is that she always helps me and is there when I need her. Uh, I like my mom. I like my mom because she bought me clothes, food, and that she got me a cat. What I admire most about my mother is how she always put us before herself and will like drop anything she is doing to help us. I like my auntie because she she lets me play with her cats. And she lets me have my high fat. What I like the most about my mom is that she's really organised and she thinks of others before she thinks of herself. I'd say what I like about mom the most is her charisma and her comedy because it's like so similar to mine. Yeah. What do I admire most about my mom? I like that my mom is kind and I like her cooking. What I like the most about my mom is that she's really cool and she can play the drums really well and sometimes she like tries to teach me it and um, she's also really caring and she cares a lot for like everyone around her. The reason I like my mom, the thing I like about my mom is that is that she does like lots of stuff for me and like and like she takes care of me and I like she looks out for me. Wasn't that nice? <laughs> they all had a good word to say about their mom, didn't they? All had a good word to say about their mom. Um, a bit later on, we're gonna. There's gonna be some uh, presentation by the Sun Sunday Club uh, later, as, uh, in appreciation of of the moms. Uh, so we're gonna do that a bit later. What I want us to to do now is uh, we're gonna do the offering, and. What we'll do during the offering is that I'll get Nathan to get ready to do the second session of the worship. So while we do the collection at the same time as Nathan's getting ready to do the songs for the second session. Okay. Amen. Once you guys have got your offering, if you guys could stand, we're going to carry on with our worship. We're going to go old school today, amen. Sins and free. 
Decided to, to switch it up and try go a little bit, a little bit new school, but not really new school. So we'll try this one. You ready? You got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. When the road looks rough ahead, and your miles and your miles from your safe warm bed, just remember what Jesus said. He said, you got a friend in me. Yeah, amen. No, we have to switch up the old school a little bit. Well, amen, amen, amen. 
He said, do you have a friend in me? Amen? Amen. 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 He will never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. And now you guys can, can stay standing. We're going to move on to our final song. <laughs> Song says, above all powers, above all kin. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, and there's no way to measure what you're worth. Above all You 
took the fall oh, and thought of me sing above all we sing crucified you crucified and lay behind the stone you live to die rejected and alone like a Crucified, crucified, you lay behind the stone, you live to die, rejected and alone, you like a rose, trampled on the ground, you took the fall, oh, and thought of me, sing above. Crucified, crucified, you lay behind the stone, you live to die, rejected and alone, like a rose, trampled on the ground, you took the fall, and thought of me. Sing above all, sing you were crucified, crucified, lay behind the stone, you live to die, rejected and alone, like a rose, trampled on the ground. You took the fall and thought of me. Sing, you took the fall, you took the fall. Oh, and thought of me. Sing, you took the fall. Yeah. And thought of me. Sing, ha ba You took the fall, and you thought of me. You took the fall, and you thought of me. You took the fall, and you thought of me. And you took the fall. You took the fall. Thought of me above all, above all. Amen. Amen. Just begin to bless the name of the Lord where you are. He took the fall and he thought of us. Amen. Amen. He didn't even have to. That's the, that's the, I can't get that can't get that around my mind. He didn't have to, but he did. Amen. How many times have has people done us done us wrong? And you know, the first thing that we, we think to do is let's cut that person off. Let's let's not talk to that person no more. But he took the fall. And he thought of us. Amen. Okay. I'm just gonna ask Steve to just Come and pray for the offering. Father God, as we bring this offering to you, Lord, we pray that you'll magnify it, multiply it, and it will do work in your kingdom. I hope it goes to all the people that need it and all the organizations, organizations that need it, Lord. Also, Father God, like to pray and bless everyone who gave today and all those who could not give Lord we give you the same heart, the same magnitude the same glory because you deserve the honour the glory 
And we magnify your name. In Jesus' name, amen. That was lovely, wasn't it? It was nice. A bit high on this, the first one, but you know. <laughs> Never too high, according to Nathan. <laughs> um, we've got a few more things to do in, in, our, in our program. I just wanted to um, um, ask um, Chris. Now, Chris is the one that's been here along the longest, not the longest, but um, more, more experienced. So, Chris, you want to give your talk, please? And then after that, um, if Anthony, can you just get ready? Morning, morning, and happy Mother's Day. Not just for mothers, but for all women. All women of God are precious to God, okay? Children or not, everyone is precious for, to God. Uh, so I'm going to look at the book of Hannah. I think if you're going through bad times or difficult times, you can always find comfort in the book of Hannah. Because Hannah was a real person with real problems, and God really helped her. If it can help her, it can help you. But if you look at um, El Elkanah, her husband, he had two wives. Because Hannah couldn't bear children, so he'd take a second wife to bear children. And he couldn't do that. If you look at Deuteronomy chapter 21, it goes on about that. You'd have a wife you don't love and a wife you love. But she couldn't bear children. And they'd go to Shiloh every year to give a peace offering at the tab tabernacle. That's, that was at uh, Shiloh. That's where, the, where uh, Joshua had placed it. And her husband loved her more than Peniah, Pen the other wife. And he showed it as well. He would give her a double portion of food, give Hannah a double portion of food. And this only antagonated Peniah. And she would tease Hannah for being childless. Because in that time, that society... It, it was considered a curse not to have children and a blessing to have children. So it, it, she would completely go on at her and on at her and on at her and eventually wear her down. So what Hannah used to do after the meal, she'd go to the temple and pray. She'd pray. And it said in verse chapter 1, verse 10, it says she was in anguish and bitterness of soul, in tears. And... For Satan, that must have looked like he'd won because Hannah was going to play a big part in God's plan. She was going to change the history of Israel. And when he saw her crying, he must have thought, that's it, I've got her. Until she said, amen. Because there's nothing more dangerous than a woman who prays. A Christian woman who prays knows the victory is found on your knees. She knows the battle is won on your knees and the answer is found on your knees. Yes, the world was against Hannah. It, came, it went out into the community and everyone would look at her and shun her and think bad of her, except for her husband. Her husband was always supportive. But that's another lesson. There's so many lessons from this little bit. Um, he loved her and he'd say, aren't I worth more than 10 sons trying to comfort her? But she was such in anguish of soul, she didn't listen. But sometimes, you know, we're so focused on what we want from God, we forget what God's already given us. And... And I think Hannah forgot that to some extent because it didn't really even comfort her. But she went to the temple and she would pray. She would pray. And Eli, the priest, he thought she was drunk. And when she said, when he said, uh, you need to leave here, you can't be in here in this state, she says, no, and she told him a problem because she must have been praying so frantic when she was praying. And he says, your, your wish will be granted by the Lord. He will grant your request. Because she offered to offer the first son to God, give him to God. She'd actually take him when he was about three years old when he was off solid food and all that kind of stuff. She'd take him to the temple and leave him there to live with Eli. I mean, that's a big sacrifice, isn't it, in itself? Something you've really longed for, and then you just give it up like that to God. But she was given her prayer purpose, divine purpose. And if your plan has a divine purpose, then God will answer it. I mean, we often see people praying. We see these American football match. You like American football, don't you, Harley? Do they pray before the match? They get down and pray. And the other team's praying as well, so which one's God's support? You know what I mean? 
which team wins, does that make any difference to God's agenda? It doesn't. It's got no purpose. It shows some is enough to God, yeah, but it doesn't have a purpose. But Hannah changed her, her, her prayer and decided and had a purpose for it, a purpose for it. And the world is, was against her and it is against you as well. It's against you as well. Why? Because you are not a citizen of this world. You're a citizen of, of heaven. And the, the, uh, First John chapter 4, verse 4 says, He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. So you take your problems to God. Nathan was singing that song. It said, um, oh, what foolish anger we go through because we don't bring it to our Lord in prayer. Bring everything to God in prayer. Give it to him. The battle's his. The, the battle's his. And what happened? She had tears of sadness, tears of despair, turned into tears of joy. I can't remember this scripture. It's uh, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 1. See how fast I can find it. <laughs> on a phone, though. On a phone. I'd have lost already, wouldn't I? Everyone knows me in notes and things like that. I just can't do them. I'll go back to chapter one. <laughs> but it, she turned her tears of sadness into tears of joy. How long is this chapter? Oh. <laughs> Here we go. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. I smile at my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. Horn just means strength. It means God lifted her strength. If you get a modern Bible like the New Living Translation, it probably says, uh, God has lifted my strength. And she went home, her face was changed. She was different. She started eating. She hadn't been eating before. And all because she knew that God was going to grant. That's faith. That's faith. That's her virtue. Faith and persistence. Faith and persistence. God can do things for you in your life. You have to bring it to him in, in prayer, especially women. Women can pray like no one's business. If Christ is the head of the church, we're the body, women are the heartbeat. A, a, woman, a praying woman is something to be feared. Satan fears a praying woman, always. And they always seem to be the best ones at it when I pray, it's a minute at most. Or I, could, I don't think God needs to know any more than that, you know what I mean? <laughs> but bring it to God. Bring it to God. But what's your virtue? Why you? Why you? God doesn't make mistakes. He's brought you into the body. You're in the body of Christ. But, but you maybe think, what can I do? What can I do in the church? Then maybe God sees something in you, you, you don't. If you want to see God's hand in your life, you've got to put your life in God's hands. You've got to give it to God in prayer. Thank you. While Anthony gets his self ready, uh, it's that question again that we we tried to stress at the beginning was, why me, why me, and at the end of the day, why not me, why not, why wouldn't God use me to do His work? Why wouldn't God use me to speak to the my neighbour or speak to my work colleague, or to do or make a difference in in the world? So, that question again, why me? Why not me? Anthony. Morning, church. Hopefully I don't make the babies cry. <laughs> Again.
talent to be used for God. Amen. Um, this part of the uh, proceedings, I'm looking for um, presentations. The All right. Philip, I think we're looking for Sunday. Yes. You can see that this part wasn't organized by me properly. <laughs> Okay, we just need a couple of um, volunteers to, um, oh, no, no. <laughs> I'm just looking because, oh yeah. I'm trying to have a day off and it just does not work. So, Sunday school children, uh, last week they were busy making something for their mothers and I think they'd like to present them to their mothers today. So if you're a Sunday school um, child, Sunday club child, then you could come and find your uh, present for your mum. Yes? They are names. So you could come and get them. And if you'd like to go and give them to your moms. <coughs> Thank you, Amari. While that is going on, um, there'll be a donation, <laughs> not a donation, uh, there'll be some um, chocolates being passed around as well for the ladies, if you want to take one, uh, as they do the presents for the S Sunday Club. I think while that's going on, if um, Steve can put on a little music just to go on while this is happening. Don't know how long this is going to take anyway. Yeah. All right. Uh -huh. Oh. I hope you're enjoying the treats. Hope you're enjoying the uh, Mother's Day service this morning. Hey, have we got any warriors out there?
right, I think we're getting close to the end now. Just got a... So we've done someone who was speak, speaking to this morning who was, was new. We had someone who had a bit more experience. We're going to try somebody now who is young. And they're also their first time speaking as well. So I'm going to ask Jesse, do you want to come up and um, do your little talk, please? <laughs> Encourage him, please. Morning, church. I hope you guys are having a good Sunday service. And happy Mother's Day to you all. So continuing with the theme of why me, I'd like to talk a bit about Esther. <clears throat> we start in Susa, the capital of ancient, the ancient Persian Empire, located in modern-day Iran. This is a good few years after the Babylonian exile, when Persia had replaced Babylon as a ruling power. As the story goes, King Xerxes I, who was ruler at the time, holds a seven-day banquet in his palace following 180 days, displaying his greatness and the wealth of his empire. Now, there's a lot of drinking that happens at these banquets. A lot of important decisions are made whilst drunk. This, of course, is a recurring theme throughout this story. The first of these being the king's decision to depose Queen Vashti, all because she refused to be shown off on the last day of festivities. At the advice of this personal attendance, the king calls for young women from every province in the empire to come to Susa so that he could essentially select a new queen. We are then introduced to Esther, who is called to be part of the harem. We know that she, is immediately, she immediately wins the king's favor and is provided with beauty treatments, special food, and attendance to serve her wherever she wanted. She, as well as the other women, are made to undergo 12 months of beauty treatments she then goes on to win even more favor and approval over all the young women that had been gathered and is chosen to be with the king in his royal residence to live as queen. We read that Mordecai uncovers a plot by, the, by two of the king's officers to assassinate him, and he reports this to Esther, who then reports to the king, crediting Mordecai as she does so. The two officers are executed, and the events are recorded in the Book of the Annals. This becomes important later. A while after this, we introduced to Haman, the big bad of the story, and an Agagite. This is particularly interesting because the Agagites were likely descendants of Agag, the king of the Amalekites, who were longtime enemies of, Israel, of the Israelites, and an enemy that King Saul prior, uh, years prior, sorry, had failed to completely destroy. The repercussions of this propagates to Esther's time, as Haman convinced King Xerxes to enact a decree to genocide the Jews. He does this first because Mordecai refuses to bow to him, but upon learning that he is a Jew, he sets in his heart to destroy them all. Killing Mordecai wasn't enough to heal his bruised ego. He used the fact that the Jews had different customs to other people and that they did not obey Persian laws, obey Persian laws, sorry, to, produce, to raise a prejudice against them. The date is then chosen for the destruction of the Jews by casting per or casting lots, which in the East was a, way to, a popular way to make decisions about things. Once the announcement is made, we are told there was great mourning among the Jews. Esther catches wind of this and reaches out to Mordecai. She initially seems hesitant, stating that if she approaches the king in the inner court with this matter, without being summoned, she risks being put to death. Mordecai responds by saying, if you remain silent in this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arrive from another place but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows, but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. This is a powerful statement that appears to firm Esther's resolve as she then instructs Mordecai to gather all the Jews in Susa to fast on this matter for three days and three nights. And says after this, she will go to the king to spite the law against this. And if she perishes, she perishes. And so when the time came, Esther approached the king in the inner court of the palace. The king is pleased with her and holds out the golden scepter permitting her an audience with him and asks what her request is. She replies by inviting the king and Haman to a banquet that same day. And at the banquet, she requests the king and Haman to come to yet another banquet the day after, saying she will answer the, king, the king's question then. Haman, in high spirits, after the banquet, sees Mordecai at the city gate, not bound to him, even ignoring him again, 
and is filled with rage. When he sees this, so we then see what appears to be the second drunken decision in this story. As Haman decides he wants to have Mordecai killed for his impudence, and after speaking with his wife, with his wife Zeresh, decides to have Mordecai executed tomorrow morning. But we all know that backfires. That night, the king couldn't sleep, and so ordered the book of Chronicles detailing his reign to be read to him. He is then reminded that Mordecai had saved him from the officers that had conspired to assassinate him. In the morning, he decides to honor him for this, much to the dismay of Haman, and even tells Haman to be the one to honor him publicly. Later on that day, Esther hosts her second banquet and reveals that the cheese are Jew and reveals the evil plans Haman had set in motion against the people. The king, enraged, storms out of the room, but Haman's fate is sealed. He is executed on the same pole he had set up to Morde for Mordecai. Esther is given Haman's estate. The Jews are follow allowed to defend themselves from all who wish to annihilate them, and they establish and celebrate the day of Purim, the day God delivered them from destruction at the hands of Persia. Throughout this story, we see Esther display great faith and courage. Despite being in a foreign land, amongst people that despise her and her kind, and with a king that likely would have had her killed had he known her identity, she stood up for herself and the Jews. She remained humble despite being highly favored for her beauty and doesn't let it get to her head, fasting for days with her people and accepting wise counsel from Mordecai. She is bold in the face of overwhelming odds and is obedient to the will of God. The interesting thing about the book of Esther, though, is that God's name is not mentioned at all, directly. But rather than it being an indication that the story of Esther is void of God, on the contrary, God's hand can be seen throughout. He still provides, protects, positions, and delivers. Many of us have been through times when we feel like we are not hearing God. But we must always remember he still works. Just like Esther, we must remain firm in our faith, bold in the face of adversity from the enemy, and humble when we are blessed. It was far from easy, far from easy for Esther as a woman in her time, and there are challenges for women even today. But I pray that hearing about these god fearing women encourages you as you go into the coming week and into the coming years. Mothers, women, remember that you too are God's children, and that you too were positioned where you are for such a time as this. Thank you. Not much to say after that. No, no. I, the only thing that I can observe is that the, the women in these stories, uh, at least um, oh well, three of them, uh, prayed, prayed, and things happened. Uh, if your mother out there, um, uh, ladies, pray. That's the, one, of, one of the things I would like, I'd like to encourage. Pray and see what the Lord can do. We ask the question, why me? And I keep saying it, why not me? Why not me for you? That's about it for our service this morning. I hope that you enjoyed the, um, what the presentations uh, that was done. Uh, thanks, um, Nathan, for the worship. Um, thanks for the gifts that were given out. I hope you appreciated those as well, too. Um, what I'm going to do um, before we go to the notices, I'm going to um, ask Philip if you would like to come and close in prayer for us, and then we can go to the notices, which I think Tim will be doing. <laughs> Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we bless you and we praise you. We exalt your name. We thank you. We thank you for our mothers. We thank you for the examples given in your scripture. And we thank you, O oh God, that you are a wonderful God that can turn, indeed, why me into why not me. And you can change our situations and our lives and make show us our purpose, our value. And we pray that you will continue to you will do that, Lord God, as we go forward in this week. You will show us our purpose, our place, what you have for us, Lord God. Continue, Lord, that, that, that the words that we've heard, Lord, let them ferment and grow and develop and bear fruit in our lives in the coming weeks and for the rest of our lives indeed. In the name of Jesus, amen.
Thank you, Harley and, and guys. Um, I tried not to get involved this morning, but Harley determined to get me involved. Um, just like you, Veronica. There you go. But I don't have any excuses. Um, so glad that everyone is able to, to join us. There have been a number of folks uh, who have been joining us online as well, um, who might not usually have been there. So good to have you with us. I hope you've enjoyed the service. And thank you for those who um, have joined in with the live chat so we know you're there. Um, please can I just remind you again that we, as a church, we support the food bank, the Handsworth Food Bank, along with um, uh, Cannon Street Baptist Church and the Wesleyan New Life Church. Um, and it's actually, for those that don't know, it is um, provided uh, a physical space at the Wesleyan New Life Church. Um, but we want it to be an effort that's something that we all do by each bringing a little bit. So just remind you, if you've not thought about it before, when you go shopping, if you're able, just bring a couple of things that might be useful for a food bank. And especially as you see the next slide, we're just thinking, why not, as Easter's coming up, just think about donating something a little bit extra, such as some Easter eggs or an Easter egg, just one. It would be great just to give something a little bit more special uh, as this time of year comes around. To remind you that this Wednesday is our drop-in day. It's only once a month, and it is for anyone to come, anyone to come. We have some crafts, we have some um, games, we have free lunch, we have some advice. Um, so sometimes we will have, I don't know if we've got um, Sonia with us this time, or um, no, no benefit advice this time, but we will hopefully have some um, advice from Eileen, who is a dementia uh, ambassador for Dementia UK. If you want to come and talk to somebody about um, the impact of dementia on your family or on yourself, um, then she should hopefully be around on Wednesday. Um, so it's a lovely time for anyone who's lonely. So you could share it with your neighbours, people who might never get out very much, but wouldn't mind coming along, having a cup of tea and having a chat um, and doing some, some activities together. Um, it's a way that we reach out to our community, to people who would not usually come to a service on a Sunday because we want to show them God's love and we want to show them the good news of Jesus. And what better time than now as we're approaching that whole time of, of Easter, that whole time of Resurrection Sunday and that weekend. To, uh, to just dwell on that for a moment, um, this week there is a, uh, the final prayer meeting on Wednesday evening for the Walk of Witness. If you haven't been, then come along this Wednesday. It's at the Life and Light Fellowship Church down on Nineveh Road at 7.30 this Wednesday. And the Walk of Witness itself is coming up. It's on the 29th, so it's, it's kind of less than, than three weeks away now, isn't it? And we'll be meeting here as usual, 12.30 here at Beacon, to get ready, to get all the instructions you need, ready for the walk to, to go off about one o'clock. But try and come a bit early, especially if you're coming by car because the roads get closed and you might not be able to get very close to us. So please pray for that. Um, thank you, everyone who bought tickets. I think did we, we got rid of most of the tickets. We sold most of the tickets in the end, which was brilliant. Yeah, which is um, us um, really showing that we're willing to support this, even if we couldn't go to the concert, you contributed. Uh, because it does cost um, quite a lot of money, between five and six thousand pounds in all, to put on a walk where you close the Soho Road, and you do everything safely and according to uh, all the rules that have to be followed to make sure that it's a brilliant day of witness. Next Saturday, which is the 16th of March, there is a training course being held as part of the, um, the Billy Graham mission, the Billy Graham um, visit to the UK. This, even if you can't um, go along and be a helper when Franklin Graham comes to Birmingham in June. This is an amazing way to, um, to understand the gospel and how you explain it to people or how you help people to understand what it means to be a Christian. And it's called the Christian Life and Witness Course. So it's about every day, everyday living and uh, how we explain to people who Jesus is and why he might be important for them and what he came to do. And, and I've been on it before. And it's well worth going on simply for that training. But I think you'll probably have to get in touch um, to uh, get yourself on this um, for next Saturday from 10 to 1. 
at the Handsworth Mission Baptist Church, just on Victoria Road behind the uh, Soho Health uh, Centre. Finally, and it's not on your screens, but this coming Friday, uh, 12 plus a meeting at 6 o'clock, uh, there's apparently going to be some um, pizza making and also some crafts and stuff going on as well. So it's going to be a really good evening. If you're part of 12 plus or you know someone who is or might like to be, let them know. This Friday, 6 o'clock, pizza making. It's got to be popular. So thank you for everyone who's joined in uh, and those who've been listening online. Please get in touch with us. You know, if you want to know any more about why we are following Jesus and why we've said the things we've said today, then just get in touch and we'll get back to you and we would love to have a chat and pray for you if you'd like someone to pray for you and with you. So thank you. Enjoy the rest of, of Mother's Day, mothers who are here, mothers who are listening online. I hope you have a brilliant day and uh, that your family really makes a fuss of you. Bye for now. <laughs>